If the individual reports pain in the shoulder area, stand in front of her and palpate the shoulders with both hands, beginning at the clavicle and moving outward to the acromioclavicular joints, scapulae, greater tubercle of the humerus, subacromial bursa, biceps groove, the anterior aspect of the glenohumeral joint, and along the axilla. Note the points of tenderness. Pain that occurs or increases in response to movement or palpation of an area of the body is known as direct pain. Pain that arises from a condition elsewhere in the body is called referred pain and occurs independently of pathology at the pain site. Referred pain in the shoulder area may be related to potentially serious conditions involving the heart, lungs, or GI tract. Compare right to left at each examination point. Note tenderness, atrophy, and the presence of spasm, swelling, or pain. Test the range of motion by having the patient lift both arms in an outward circular motion until they are directly above the head. Then bring them down in a forward arc, passing midline and extending the hands beyond the buttocks. Have the patient relax her arms, then cross them at the wrist behind her back. Then place both hands on the back of her head with her elbows out to the side. Note any limitations in her range of motion. Further assess flexion of the elbow by having the patient hold her right hand at her side and raise it from the elbow until her hand is tight against her shoulder. Repeat with the left. With her hands held in front with the elbows bent to 90 degrees, ask the patient to pronate and supinate her hands, then tighten and relax her fists. Note any hesitations, facial grimacing, unequal movement of one side, or inability to perform. Now palpate the joints of the wrist and the digits. Be alert to excessive size and tenderness. Test arm strength by asking the patient to resist first your attempt to pull her bent arm out straight, then pushing your hand away. Come on, straighten it up. Straighten, 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 straighten. That's a little bit. Have the patient lie down for the next portion of the assessment. There's no abnormalities. Inspect the feet for overall shape and toe configuration. Note corns, calluses, swelling, nodules, and deformities such as bunions and hammer toes. There does not appear to be any Support the foot in your hands and palpate the anterior ankle with your thumbs, then the Achilles tendon with your fingertips. Joint spaces should be smooth with no swelling or tenderness. The tendon should be firm and pain-free. Check ankle flexion by supporting the foot with one hand beneath the ankle and with the other press the foot upward, then gently rocking the ankle inward and outward. Palpate the metatarsophalangeal joints with your thumb on the dorsum and your fingers on the plantar surface of the foot for any swelling, tenderness, or nodules. Palpate along the base of the toes at the ball of the foot. There's no abnormalities that I can feel. Finally, using your thumb and forefinger, palpate the joints of each toe. Repeat the exam for the other foot. Now, palpate the hip joints, paying particular attention to swelling or tenderness in the area of the greater trochanter, the ischial tuberosity, and the anterior superior iliac spine. This portion of the exam may not be possible if the patient is significantly overweight.